Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is about three weeks away now as of me recording this video and I wanted to talk about a few of the past Zelda games that I feel like have a little bit of a bit of pinpointing of the lore of where Tears of the Kingdom is going to go and theories on how I feel like it's gonna pull from some of these past Zelda games so if you have the time to be able to play or just revisit maybe look at some of the lore to understand more of the story in Tears of the Kingdom like going forward because I really feel like it is going to be important before I get started, my name is Delaney and I like talking about games. If you want to talk about games too, have a seat, hang out, and like and subscribe. So happy to have all of you here, happy to have return viewers here, and let's get started. I feel like how to their kingdom is going, it looks like it's going to be pulling from a lot of different backgrounds of the Zelda games. So I'm mostly um, going to be talking about the 3D Zelda games, so you know, Ocarina of Time, like that. So I'm, the first game that I'm going to mention, well actually, you know, if you haven't played it, Zelda Breath of the Wild, I feel like that's the most obvious. <laughs> Um, I would say, um, I mean, I talk about it all the time, but if you have not played Breath of the Wild, you need to play it right now because it is um, genre defining. No, but yeah, if you haven't played Breath of the Wild and you want to get into Tears of the Kingdom, I feel like you need to have a little bit of idea with like the lore, the mechanics, and just um, all around like how this world with um, Link and Zelda exists before you are able to get into Tears of the Kingdom. Like I feel like it's, it's a sequel to Breath of the Wild, so I mean, yeah. <laughs> The next game I'm gonna say, with Skyward Sword actually, the Nintendo gave it an HD remaster and it released last year. And I don't think that it's too far-fetched to say that there is a reason why they decided to bring out Zelda um, Skyward Sword back onto the Switch. It is actually notoriously more clunkier of the controls. A lot of people complained about the controls because you had to use the Wii to play it and it was a little bit more difficult. Like they also decided to release it because they knew how to refresh everyone's mind with the lore of Zelda, especially since you can see the inspiration they have with the Sky Islands um, in Tears of the Kingdom. So mechanically, Zelda Skyward Sword is at the beginning of the Zelda and Link timeline, which leads into them kind of like being cursed. I wouldn't, I don't know if I would say curse, but which leads into their timeline of continuously having to save the world, um, being linked together and being linked with Demise, which is also Ganon and Ganondorf. Um, the next game, which I've been playing right now, is Ocarina of Time. It is the first appearance of Ganondorf and also Zelda and Link in the Triforce. So I feel like it is something good to revisit to have a better understanding of Ganondorf and just like the battle between. Zelda and Link. But also a thing that I did notice when looking at some of the past trailers of Tears of the Kingdom is that there are some enemies from Ocarina of Time that look like that it will be inside of Tears of the Kingdom. If you look at one of the cutscenes, I'm trying to place it on here, an enemy called Redead, which is in Ocarina of Time. This, no one told me about this. Like I, this is my first playthrough of Ocarina and it's actually the most terrifying thing I've ever encountered. I'm actually afraid of seeing that in Tears of the Kingdom, but I can you can clearly see it in the clip of the Blood Moon that it looks like a redead is there. It's a nightmare for me. <laughs> I, that's why I've been playing through Ocarina of Time because it's good to like have a refresher since Breath of the Wild and it looks like Tears of the Kingdom has been pulling from past archives of enemies and older games like there's even this you see the three-headed dragon a glee clock um glee clock is, did I, I said that right? Yeah, I think it's kind of interesting that they're going back into some of the archives to pull out more enemies and give you more variations. So the next game, this more so just because because it's a sequel to Ocarina of Time, which is Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask, it has, you know, features more of a time mechanic. And it also kind of makes me wonder if, even though um, Ocarina of Time is pretty dark, I feel like Majora's Mask is a little bit darker. Majora's Mask is a little bit more ominous. From the trailers that I've seen in Series A Kingdom, it has the same kind of feels to me. Because, like I feel like possibly in Tears of the Kingdom that there's going to be a character death. I'm wondering possibly if Zelda is going to die in Tears of the Kingdom just based off the trailer and how high stakes it is. It seems really like more ominous than it did previously in Breath of the Wild. Like the last game, this is a little bit, not a full, a full stretch, but this one is a little bit harder to play because I kind of wish they did release this on the Switch and that's Twilight Princess. So this one, you can't really access it unless you have a GameCube or if you want to do 
emulation <laughs> so i say like just to be able to revisit the lore this one is actually canonically the darkest of all of the zelda games aesthetically wise and story wise there are some elements in twilight princess that I've seen been carried over into Breath of the Wild. One of the main parallels I noticed from Twilight Princess is that there are these blue spirits. There is a very distinct world in Tears of the Kingdom. It looks like it's underground. It makes me wonder if there's going to be some underground elements just because there is the scene of Zelda falling. Also been some like, show of Zelda and Link underground um, like in a cave like area and there's been scenes of Link running around in a cave. I feel like um, the blue spirits it kind of is a direct link to the lore in Twilight Princess. So there could be like if you notice with the other ghostly figures they've shown in Breath of the Wild like the Guardians or even Zelda's dad the, he, they have blue spirits around them. So it makes me wonder if there would be more elements of like otherworldly elements of like Link has like a mission to do with them or maybe just having to be able to release these spirits and like save them. Some of these elements are kind of linked between a few of the past Zelda the games maybe it could be like a closing out of the cycle of link and zelda i'm just really excited for tears of the kingdom so um these are a few games that i feel like will be good to revisit just to have like more of the lore that is going to go into tears of the kingdom and how that will play out between like, zelda link and now ganondorf so let me know what you guys think down below like what do you think of the trailer the final trailer that we saw of tears of the kingdom i think that it was amazing it was great to see so many different characters and just how how Link is going to interact with all these different people and then the mysterious new character that looks similar to um, Zelda but I'm pretty sure it isn't Zelda she looks like she could be a goddess and if you made this far into the video thank you so much for watching I hope all of you guys are doing well as always and have a wonderful day bye